Assalamu alaikum. For last two lecture videos, we have been discussing uninformed search strategies. So far, we have looked into the working of dread first search and depth first search. In this lecture video, we will look into other available algorithms for uninformed search strategies. We will discuss these three search algorithms, and by the end of this lecture, the uninformed search strategies would be completed. This is the fourth algorithm in the series of uninformed search strategy videos. Depth limited search algorithm is similar to depth first search with a predetermined limit. If you do not have clear understanding of depth first search, then I would suggest that you must see video of lecture 10 and then come back to this lecture for thorough and clear understanding. Depth limited search can solve the drawback of infinite path problem in depth first search. In this algorithm, the node at depth limit will be treated as it has no successor nodes further. Depth limited search is equals to depth first search with the addition of limit for the level. Let's discuss depth limited search using an example. As we have already discussed, the depth limited search is an extension of depth first search, the stack data structure will be used for this as well. We will also use an output array to display final output of the algorithm. Information of levels is very important in depth limited search as we have to select the maximum level in advance up to which we want to run the searching algorithm. In this example state space we have root node A and two goal nodes G1 and G2. This tree has total four levels 0, 1, 2, 3. Root node is always at level 0. First of all, algorithm starts by selecting L. We have to select level, then we have to apply DFS up to the selected level. This is the algorithm of depth limited search. First of all, we will select L. L is the limit or level up to which we want to apply depth first search. Let's select L is equals to 2 for this example. Once level is selected, space, state space or nodes after that selected level are no more considered part of the search space and thus tree is only considered up to selected level, which prunes the tree. Thus nodes after level 2 would be considered as if they do not have any children. Simply apply depth first search to the remaining tree. I have already explained the concept in video lecture of 10. One more detail to discuss here is that we have limited our search to level 2. By searching only this part of tree, we would never reach goal sometimes, as goal is located on level 3. As we can see from this example that we have selected level 2 up to which we will apply search, but our goal was located at level 3, so we will never reach the goal by applying this level. Thus, DLS is incomplete as there is no surety the search will always find a goal even if the goal existed. The search will only find goal when goal existed within the given height limit. As we have seen in previous example, the height limit was set at 2 but goal was located at level 3. Thus, the search would never reach goal which is after the set limit. It resolves the problem of DFS by reducing height of tree which ensures that infinite loops are avoided. If we set length to infinity, then depth limited search will start working as depth first search. Thus, L is equals to infinity is the same as meaning no L. If solution existed after selected depth limit, then algorithm will never find solution that thus will be incomplete. It will only find solution if it existed before the height limit. Previously, we considered branching factor is to power of maximum depth, depth, depth but in case of depth limited search maximum depth will be replaced by selected height limit which will become our new maximum depth as it will become new depth of the tree. Depth limited search can be viewed as a special case of, case of depth first search and it is also not optimal even if limit is kept greater than depth. 
which means even if we kept limit greater than depth of the state space even then the algorithm would not be able to find optimal solution thus dls is not optimal now the question arises how can we choose l or length which is good enough to locate goal for example on ma map of romania there are 20 cities the solution if exists must, must be at most the length of 19 that is 1 minus the total length which is uh, v minus 1 uh, from the total length because of root node thus l becomes 19 The iterative deepening algorithm is also extension of depth first search. This search algorithms find out the best depth limit that does it by gradually increasing the limit until a goal is found. This algorithms perform depth first search and it keeps increasing the depth limit after each iteration until the goal node is found. This search algorithm combines the benefit of depth first search is fast search and depth first search is more memory efficiency. The iterative search algorithm is useful uninformed search when search space is large and depth of goal is unknown. In the third iteration, the algorithm find the goal node. In first iteration only, output would be A. In second iteration, output would be A, B, C. And in third iteration, the goal will be found. The iteration would be A, B, C, D, E, F and G as shown here. For further understanding, this example can be followed. As the name suggests, limit is iterative depth search is set iteratively until goal is found. Initially, when limit is zero, only root node would be searched. The algorithm will ask, do I find the goal node? The answer will be no and search will iterate to the next level. Limit will be incremented to one and next level, the one after root node will be searched. The algorithm will search for goal node. If it is found at this level, the search will stop. Otherwise, limit will be iterated to next level. As goal is not found, we will move to the next level. By incrementing level, level, level limit, we will reach at limit 2 now and goal will be searched at level 2. Notice that every time this search starts from root node, even though in previous level it has already searched these nodes. This is drawback of iterative deepening search as it repeats the already visited nodes in every iteration. One more thing to understand is that after setting the limit, the algorithm of depth first search will be followed always. We will keep on incrementing the limit in every iteration until the algorithm finds goal or complete state space is searched. This algorithm is complete if branching factor is finite. Let's suppose B is branching factor and D is depth. Then worst case time complexity is big O notation of B raised to power D. And same uh, and for space we have B into D. Optimal? Yes, it will become optimal if all the step costs are equal. We have learned these lessons from iterative deepening search. It combines the benefits of BFS and DFS search algorithms in terms of fast search and memory efficiency. The main drawback of uh, iterative deepening depth first search is that it repeats all the work of previous phase. In general, iterative deepening search is preferred uninformed search method when there is a large search space and the depth of the solution is not known. Bidirectional search algorithm is the large search algorithm in the uninformed series. Bidirectional search algorithm runs two simultaneously searches, one from initial state called as forward search and one from goal node called as backward search. To find the goal, bidirectional search replaces one single search graph with two small subgraphs in which one starts the search from initial vertex and other starts the search from the goal vertex. The search stops when two graphs intersect each other. In this figure, one problem is divided into two subgraphs. In one subgraph, search is starting from root node, from the initial node, from the start node, whereas in other subgraph, search is starting from goal, the final node. Bidirectional search can use search techniques such as breadth first search, depth first search, depth limited search, etc. 
In this search tree, bidirectional search algorithm is applied. This algorithm divides one complete graph into two subgraphs. One this one and another is this one. It starts traversing from node 1. This is root node. In forward direction, from root node we move into forward direction and starts from goal node which is node 16 in backward direction. The algorithm terminates at root 9. This is the intersection point. Here, where, uh, here is where the bidirectional search will end. Here at this point the two searches, the forward search and the backward search will meet or intersect at this point. This is the intersection node. Search is complete if branching factor B is finite and if both directions use the BFS algorithm for searching. We have time and space complexity of B raised to power D divided by 2 as the whole state space is divided into two subgraphs depth wise thus dividing depth into two equal parts. It is optimal if both directions use BFS and if all step costs are identical. Let's discuss advantages and disadvantages of bidirectional search. It is fast because the large graph is divided into two. Requires less memory as bigger state space is divided into two smaller state spaces that are lighter on the memory. These are the advantages. Now let's now discuss the disadvantages. Its implementation is difficult as we have to find the exact midpoint of the search graph which is sometimes a tricky task and furthermore two searches are applied simultaneously which adds to the complexity of writing the algorithm. Bidirectional searches can only be applied to goal based agents as goal must be known in advance for searches to work. This is comparison for, for all the uninformed search algorithms that we have discussed so far. This completes the discussion for today. Allah Hafiz.